Um, one thing I'll say about this piece is that if you watch a ton of different pro videos, um, you'll see that everyone uses different fingering. And I also changed some of the fingerings as well. Now, when I was younger, I would try to change all the fingerings because there's so many like glissando and like just position changes everywhere and string um, changes and like playing certain melodies on upper strings. And um, so you'll see tons of people change those things. But what I'll say is I'll say, don't change too many. Don't eliminate too many of those glissandos and things like that because that's part of the flavor of the piece. I do change some, but nevertheless, you should keep enough of them in there that the, the kind of rhapsodic nature of the, of the piece um, is still there. If you eliminate it and put in all like solid fingerings, staying in one position as often as possible, utilizing open strings more, you're going to lose a lot of that flavor that kind of contributes to this like gypsy kind of um, um, guitaristic um, period of time. So I would really make sure that you try to incorporate some of them. And then if you want, you can eliminate um, some of the more ridiculous ones. So what I'll do is I'll just talk about the piece a little bit and then I'll do a, a quick walkthrough of everything. Um, but I have extensive performance notes. Um, I have quite a few comments on the bottom of the score. So if you're interested in like reading where I changed some of the things or where you can eliminate even more of the shifts, just uh, take a look at that. But I think I've reached a very nice compromise of staying almost 95% true to the original score and fingerings, um, but adding a few things for the modern guitarist. So, of course, um, stay focused on the melody. Um, make sure that that's always coming out of the texture and that your phrasing is all connected to that. Don't let the chords interrupt it too much. You want a very horizontal movement in this piece. One thing I did with the piece is I first played it with a metronome, and um, I think it's really important that you do that. This piece um, uses tons of rubato, and I used tons of rubato in my performance. Um, but first, learn how to play it with the metronome. I literally started down at 40 clicks, so like super slow. later in the piece going that slow will make sure that like all your glissandos are going to the actual correct note and you're not just winging it too much and also the rhythms in the score are about as close as to could get to writing out the song so you should learn how to play it with the metronome first to make sure you actually are doing all the rhythms correctly and that you have a beat structure right once you have that beat structure and you can play it in time, as you start to speed it up, you can start to add a little bit of rubato to make sense of the phrasing in this kind of wild piece. Um, and that will really help kind of loosen the piece up, but you'll still have beat structure and you'll still be close enough to the rhythms that are written in the score that you'll be correct, but musical. Um, if you don't do that step with the metronome, you might be playing it kind of wrong. So make sure that you do that going through the whole piece. Um, you have to start off really slow because there's 
you pretty much have to memorize this piece. Like a, a lot of my videos, I sight read them and I look at the score. This one I pretty much had to memorize because it's just all over the place. So let's just take a look. This stuff's a little bit cramped, but um, it's not too bad. Just reach out. Slide up like Torega does. And then a modern player might play the open string here. Open. But I actually do his fingering of going. Just for that color and, and also I'm just including more of his fingering for the feel of the piece. It's, it, it'll make the piece more consistent from start to finish because you can't always use open strings. But that's kind of your choice. If you think you can smooth it out with the open string, it's a good idea because that makes that shift a lot easier. But I don't. <laughs> when you come down from that, I do a hinge bar here. You could do a full bar, but I just I want to be careful about not muting the bass too soon. There's nothing there I can help you with, you just have to jump over. But there's a, some writ in there, so you have some, you have some leeway in terms of um, getting that chord. And then you start again. Same thing. Here, I change the fingering. Um, when I slide up, the first time I slide up, I use two, but then I switch to four for the second one. That way I can do that, that next figure. So slide up. Actually, I, I bar rate all of them. So after doing that first part, just do the bar rate the whole time over six strings so you don't have to reposition your bar. And then, Um, just make sure when you're doing this, these glissandos that you're actually hearing the F at the top of the glissando. You can check it afterwards just to make sure you've got it right. And cadence. I do little mutes just to kind of clean up the sound before doing the next thing. Now here I really changed the fingerings and I think this is a a place where my fingering really helps the piece. I slide a bar A up. Uh, yeah, that's right. That way I can hear this and then the harmony. I think that works really, really well. as much rubato there as you wish in this section. Just practice it with the metronome first so that you know what it sounds like as written and then you can use tons of little pauses. Here, plant your thumb on the bass string every time you do the melody. Not too soon though, here. Again, I mute to clean up the sound. Keep your bar A. So you slide up and then rewritten the harmonics to be at pitch because I think that's the way they should be written in guitar music um, so just keep that keep that in mind um, I write them right at pitch um, one octave below in guitar notation but at pitch instead of like the string so 
keep that in mind, but I've marked it with like a Roman numeral and a string number, so you should know what to do there. So then this is the most difficult part of the piece, for sure, no doubt. But you can use a lot of rubato and kind of ease your way into it. Oh, sorry. Let me do that again. I almost took out this one. Because it's just so crazy. It's like so all over the place. But it, it sounds, it gives that character to the, to the music that you, I think you want for this piece. So I wouldn't eliminate it. Then upper position. Uh, sorry. So I slide in with four, grab the chord, or harmonic, and I play this figure here. I see lots of people play it down here. Um, I stay here because of that chord that comes afterwards. In order to get that chord really solidly, I like to be in the position that I need there, so. Just remember when you're doing this figure, it's easy to like get cramped up, so keep those fingers curved by bringing the palm close in so it forces curvature in the fingers. So you can see it's getting up pretty high, but sustain that top note while you get these ones. Last figure, do a barre. That way you're ready for that note. You don't have to reposition your hand. Then palm mute. I don't, I release the palm mute for the high B flat because it almost sounds muted when you get up this high on the guitar, it almost sounds muted already. So the pizzicato is like almost taken care of for you. To mute it would, doesn't sound like anything. So I would do the pizzicato and palm mute here. Let that one ring out. And then it's just a cute little ending. You can do it all sorts of different ways. You can do it all short. I actually kind of like that, but it's not really what's written. Give it like a little bit of length so you get some tone quality out of the guitar, but you can, you can choose what you want. If you're a, um, a virtuosic player and you're playing it much faster and really rhapsodically, that cute little like staccato ending could be very effective. So I, I hope that gives you some ideas on the piece. It's a pretty tough little piece just in the sense of all the movement all over the place. I mean, in some ways it's small and it's intermediate, but in another way, like if you don't memorize it, it's really hard to play. It, once you have it memorized, it's kind of like little riffs. So as long as you practice them lots, it's pretty easy to assimilate into your playing, but otherwise it can be very difficult. Um, that said, just remember that first step I said, put this metronome down to 40 and just practice it super slow. Once you can do that, it, that took me a while to be able to do, but then once I could do that, I just it sped up so quickly after that because I had everything in order, right? And then it was actually pretty easy to put together and memorize.